In this part three of the video series on phishing and ransomware, we're going to talk about how do I get thread intel into Curita and why this is important is that in order for some many of these rules, not all, but many of these rules may require some IOCs, indicators of compromise. And which are the main IOCs? Let me actually put them in red here. Bad IPs. IPs that have bad reputation. Bad URLs. People that click on links that are known to be bad. Bad hashes of artifacts that are known to be bad. Those are the main three uh, IOCs, right? And, and as you probably know, the way that those rules work is by having those uh, IOCs stored in tables in Curator, and we call those tables reference set. And more on that as we go along with this part of the video. So, let's say that you have a preference for a particular source of thread intel. For example, recorded future. Well, you search on the apps for the recorded future ones and you can add those to your curator. And what this does is it populates automatically reference set or reference maps, depending on, on the application, that your rules will use. And also if we look for, we saw these guys before for Cofence, again this is a, you know, they say largest or oh, ingest phishing intelligence consistent IOCs that can be in that have been human verified. Well, again, it really depends on what's your flavor. But in Curita itself, there is a fantastic app, and this requires a licensing. Let me actually go to my Curita. And go to the Thread Intelligence app. Fantastic app. And we're going to be spending the rest of this video just on this app alone. So what we have in here, as you can see, I have a, a trial license. So in here, what we have is our public collections. These are recent and these are early warning. This, this is, well, what's the value of this? Let's say that we are looking for phishing. <laughs> on those public collections, but just by typing the word phishing in there, notice the ones that I get, I get 25 very recent, you know, collections that have, and we, we, we're going to be clicking on, on, on this and, and see what are the IOCs, what's the nature of this collection, what is it that this brings together? Let's say that you've been hit or you are afraid of a specific type of, you know, phishing. Let's look for, for example, Conti. And see what can we find in here. Actually on these 25 there's no one uh, related to content so let's go back. Oh no actually they are. So he, here we have. So we put here Conti, it took a while but it came up, came back with these uh, particular collections of the Conti attack. Let's see one of them. So let's look at the, you know, the most recent one. And when we see it here, say, well, there are some, should be, most of them, there are IOCs, a URL, an IP address, another URL, a hash, another IP. So instead of you copy and pasting and doing all that grabbing, well, all you do is that you click in here and you're going to do scan now. And then depends on the time frame that you, you go into this gear and specify how long back do I want to have a AQL query created for you. You don't have to even know how to do this. But you can have it after, after it's done if you want to use it for something else. But let's let's actually create an AQL, specify how long back you wanted it to go, and scan your current curator system for logs and soon in Q3, Q4 this year, 2021, it's, it's, this is going to be available to search on flows as well. And this is going to perform one heck of an AQL search on your system. 
and look for those to see whether those IOCs are present. So after you click scan now you get this icon this uh, thing coming highlighted called view results and uh, of course if you're searching for gazillion numbers of IOCs then the search will take longer but this one is, is kind of a short because there are very few IOCs and phew good enough I don't have anyone on this system I can actually go back in time and go back you know last seven days or whatever you want to do but it's a quick way of actually you know dealing with this uh, particular IOC and again you can save that AQL that we just saw in here and, and you can have save it as a save search in case that you want to do that type of search again I mean you're not going to build this manually right so, so and you don't have to you have it right here for you okay But that's one off. What if I want to do this automatically? If I want to make sure that when this collection gets updated, I get that data and I put it in some of my reference set, my tables. Oh, well, easy. All I need to do is click, click here, view collection. Click here, get taxi feed, grab the taxi feed. And I have done all the videos that show how easily it is. You go into the admin tab. It's actually kind of uh, uh, do it. Let's go into the admin tab and go into the Thread Intelligence app and define your... I recommend you to watch the video to understand how this actually works and go here and then you have the Thread feed that you want to add, right? So that will automate the process so you don't have to do this every time. Let's go back to that wonderful Thread Intelligence app. Now, there's more, there are more icons in here. Okay, so these are the collection highlight, these are all the public collections, similar to what we uh, just did. Uh, let's click in here on this icon. And this is actually a fantastic thing that notice what it's actually doing in real time. This is actually feeding Notice the name of the reference sets. These are, for example, quite a few URLs for malware, IPv4, botnet, and you know, an an anonymization services, and the list goes on. Mm -hmm. These are important uh, IOCs that are being, as when I click in here, they are being automatically updated into my reference sets under those name in my system that easy it is so now all i need to do is figure out what rules use this particular reference set so let's actually grab this particular name in here i'm going to copy that name and for that the use game manager that wonderful app is here to assist you with that so if you click on the main on this icon in here that gives you all the templates Notice that there's a template created for you already, reference sets per rule. And when you click on that one, you, you actually get to see that this particular rule works with this particular reference set. But what we want is just the opposite. It's from the reference set, I want to get to know the rule. Easy. We go back to our templates and look at the template that is just the opposite, rules per reference set. And there are variations that you can see, you know, uh, templates that uh, gives you that. If, wanna, if I want to look for any one of those XFEs once, I type here XFE and, you know, you, you can actually see them in here. If, if you want one of those reference sets that are being automatically fed by that I, that uh, application uh, to be involved in a rule, well, you can modify your rule and set and you know put the name of the of that particular reference set, and voila. So, in the first video, we saw the value of flows. We in the second video we look at offenses and how you get the rules that will fire those offenses. How you fit this? In this video, we look at threading tail and ways that you can beef up your 
threat intelligence and curator in the next one we're going to be talking about other sources or the endpoints that gives you additional data for this